Today I'm gonna to show you how to use HLE Live Link. First you can download it from the GitHub page. I'll have a link in the description. You just get the seven zip or zip file and you can go ahead and extract that. So for installation, uh, you can read the readme or just copy this folder to wherever your Cinema 4D folder is. It needs to be R20 or greater. Um, and you need to put in the plugins folder. This might not exist. If it doesn't, just create a new folder called plugins. And we're going to paste that in. Okay, so next time you start up Cinema 4D, the plugin should load. And now Cinema 4D is loaded. Before we do anything, we're going to need a reference map. Uh, if you already have a reference map or you don't need one for your use, you can skip ahead. I'll put a timestamp in the description. But for generating reference maps, there's a million different ways. I like to use Blender and uh, this BSB importer. I'm not entirely sure who makes it, but I'll put a link to the GitHub on where to get that. Installs just like any other Blender plugin. Just go to import BSP mesh and simply navigate to the Counter-Strike folder or wherever the map is. CSGO maps and I need Mirage for this one. Okay, now the map's imported, looks all good. So we're just gonna go to File, Export, and we're export it as a Wavefront OBJ object. Uh, the actual forward and up axes here, it doesn't really matter what you put, you can always rotate it to get in place in Cinema 4D, but if you do negative X forward and Y up, you will get the exact rotation, not have to move it at all. So I'm just gonna put that on the desktop, we'll just call it Mirage ref and go ahead and export that okay so we can head back into cinema 4d we're going to open up that obj file we don't need any materials and we don't need texture coordinates and you can leave the defaults which should have flip z axes on so go ahead and import that and it's going to be blocked by the sky meshes and the triggers so just go down here Select the sky mesh, delete it, or it looks a lot better. And then you can just search for triggers. Select all of these and delete them. There we go. So that out of the way, we have a reference map. Uh, now we're just gonna need a camera to work with. So we'll just create a camera, it's called POV. And we're gonna go ahead and go to plugins, HLE live link. And we're gonna say we wanna check for updates. With the camera selected, you're just gonna click set camera and you'll see it pop up down here and you're good to go. And it's important you don't delete this camera or do anything weird with it and your Cinema 4D might crash or hang if you do that. So make sure you don't do that. So start with the settings, uh, menu, you can check for updates, all that fun stuff. Uh, host name it needs to be an IPv4 address. It doesn't support paths. If you don't know what any of that is, don't worry about it, but you can't put a path. Uh, port is standard. Um, if you're not sure, leave it at the defaults. So this is the local host. If you know what you're doing, you can set it to a LAN address and any computers that are networked on the LAN can connect to the server. You can also set it to your actual IP address. Of course, anywhere you're connecting, the port needs to be open. So if you're not sure, you can probably just throw this to port 80 or I think 443 is also usually open but I'm just gonna leave this as defaults for now. We're just gonna work on the local host and we're gonna go ahead and click start listen. And once the server is listening, you can copy the connect command just to make it easier. And we're gonna hop into CSGO. So you must launch CSGO with HLEE. Uh, I'll put a link to that in the description as well. And we're gonna run the commands that were copied. And you can see right away, we've connected. Now we've connected, you can rename the client to keep track of them. So my computer will say, and that will reflect on the client's end as well. Uh, if you want to, you can click disconnect to get rid of any unwanted connections. But obviously we want that connection, so we'll keep them connected. HLA Live Link has two modes. You can either map the camera from the game into Cinema 4D, or you can map the camera from Cinema 4D into the game. So. We're just going to go ahead and select the client that we want to be the active client by clicking here. If you don't have a camera selected, it won't let you do this. So make sure you've selected a camera in your scene and you can see right away, it's already matched up. 
And just like that, it is already good to go. That's the basis for mapping to Cinema 4D. Um, you'll notice that we have this option update rate in Hertz. This is how many times per second that you want the view to be updated, whether that's updating from Cinema 4D to CSGO or vice versa. Uh, if you want to up this or lower it or whatever, you just need to stop using an active client and then you can bump it up. Uh, with a local host, you can go pretty high um, over a LAN, not as much over internet, I'm not too sure. Um, try setting it as high as you need, but keep in mind the higher you go, the more unstable it's gonna get. So we've bumped that up and we can see it's a lot smoother now. I find 120 is pretty good. You can usually just use 60 though and it's good enough. Um, yeah. For actually mapping the camera from Cinema 4D to CSGO, you're gonna wanna go into free cam. And then we are gonna want to switch to game. When we switch to game, it's going to deselect the client, so we'll have to reselect them again. And I'm just gonna put this on the half here. Now, you see if we rotate around, our camera works one to one. You can of course just move it around manually as well. And you have full control. So you can go ahead and create cam paths, do whatever you want. Um, this is particularly useful for live games. That is kind of the primary purpose of this application. Although in the future, I do plan on adding some tools for just creating cam paths for movies if the demand is high enough. Uh, this will track your position, rotation, obviously. Um, it'll also track your field of view. So you can do that. It works both ways as well. If someone's, I know when in this, op, in this clip is using an op, but if someone in this clip was using an op or whatever, anything where the FOV might change, that will also be mapped back to Cinema 4D. And really the only final note is you're gonna to wanna to click stop listen before you shut down CSGO. If you don't, your clients might get hung and they might freeze, the game might crash. Uh, and also Cinema 4D itself will probably give you an error message. If you do get one, you can just ignore it. I uh, hope you found that helpful. If you have any feature requests, feel free to make them on the GitHub. And uh, if there's any more questions, leave them in the comments and I can do my best to answer them.